And for our final presentation today, um, we will be highlighting the last two pilot projects. So if the presenters could join me on stage, that would be great. So Dr. Gray, I know you're going first. There they are. Wonderful. So I'll just get started as you guys are coming up. Um, the, uh, these folks were awarded Kirka pilot grants in 2016, and this brief flash talk is their way to give you a preview of the full hour-long talk that they will be giving in, um, they'll probably come to the stage, I think, thank you, um, in the next few months. So, so glad that you could join us for the Kirka Summit. So the pilot grants program was really meant to fund cutting-edge transdisciplinary research that addresses significant health disparities in American Indian health in the region, embracing social determinants of health, leading to the improvement of American Indian health, and that these projects have a strong potential for future funding. So um, unfortunately, Lisa Schrader wasn't able to um, travel today due to um, some deaths in the family, um, but Dr. Gray, um, I'll do a quick introduction of everybody and then we'll have Dr. Gray start the presentation. So Dr. Jackie Gray is Choctaw Cherokee Research Associate Professor and Associate Director for the Center for Rural Health at the University of North Dakota. She's the director of the Seven Generation Center of Excellence in Native Behavioral Health and director of the National Indigenous Elder Justice Initiative. And we're thankful she's been on our, on our advisory board um, the, the entire time. And then um, Dr. Lacey McCormick is an assistant professor in the Health and Nutritional Sciences Department and director of the undergrad didactic program in dietetics in South Dakota State University. And Ray O'Leary is a tribal member from Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa and resident of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. She is a research nurse and public health advocate for Missouri Breaks in Eagle Butte, South Dakota. So please join me in welcoming them. Good morning. The uh, Watching Yaya or the Hope Project uh, was a joint project with the University of North Dakota and uh, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Housing. Uh, this project looked at what gives Lakota youth hope. And we had uh, 56 participants in focus groups from 13 to 24 years of age, uh, from seventh grade through college sophomores, and three-fourths of them were full-time students. Uh, almost all of them were uh, tribal members, and they came from seven different districts within the reservation. So some of the questions that we asked were like, how would, you, how would someone else know if you were hopeful? We asked, you know, how, would, how, how do you experience hope? What gives you hope? But uh, and as we looked at the responses to that, we found that it really fit the medicine wheel. The, their dedication and commitment to perseverance, the resilience and capability for growth, their physical and verbal communication, and their attitudes and achievements, and some of the different ways that they, they saw that. Another part, uh, of the project, they developed a creative project, and it could be art, poetry, uh, with photographs, dance, however they wanted to do it creatively, to show how they would express hope or what gave them hope. And these come from some of those projects. Um, from you know the messages they received from people, it really was strongly related to those relationships and support from those relationships, whether it be family, sports organizations and groups, teams they belong to, uh, being role models for their children, uh, encouraging peers, all of those types of things were very important. So achieving goals, was important, education in achieving those goals, 
Hope was communicated and taught through those relationships. And then family and that sense of belonging was really important in generating and re reciprocating hope. Uh, the physical also had to do with being supported and being a part of those sports and active teams. And then the need for increased support for a healthy expression, the connectiveness, the positive self-esteem, identity, emotional regulation, all of that the hope was important then. So we're really looking at this. Uh, the third part of the project was after creating these, these creative projects, Expressing Hope, then they had community meetings where the youth presented their projects to the parents in the community. And getting their voice out because of the high uh, rates of suicide, we're hoping to take this project to take a look at what we're do, what's being done in the community to build more successful suicide prevention programs uh, in the community. And it really looks like that family-oriented or group-oriented approach to building those healthy bonds, uh, recognizing their strengths and their abilities, utilizing creative forms of expression, and continuing to use those physical activities. That was the strongest area, but also building on that with culture, humor, positive reinforcement, all kinds of uh, things that are gonna help them feel like they belong and there's people there to support them. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are very excited to be here today. Uh, Ray and I were actually undergraduates together at SDSU, and we both worked at the EA Martin program in human nutrition under the direction of Dr. Bonnie Specker. Um, so it's been exciting that our professional paths have crossed like this. Um, <clears throat> the, the study really came about after um, Ray and I chatted about applying um, for this funding opportunity. Uh, one of the things that got talked about a lot was if we are interested in addressing health outcomes in um, certain populations, we usually have an intervention, we're trying to affect an outcome, and we control for all of these different socioeconomic variables in our analyses when we do that. Um, so instead of controlling for these variables in an analysis, why don't we try and change those variables as part of our intervention? So that was really the, the premise for this project. And we are uh, currently working on analyzing our data right now. So we'll talk about uh, what we've done and, and our next steps. So I'll go through the specific aims here briefly. Um, the first one is to assess the effect of setting and attaining income and education related goals on factors that influence health behaviors. And those factors specifically that we looked at were the health focus of control, self-efficacy, and perceived um, general well-being. Um, we did that through a case control um, setup where we had 30 women who received the intervention, the goal setting intervention, and 30 who were controls. Um, another piece that we did was a resource tree. Um, what we found in our community is that there's many um, resources that are, that are available to our community members. However, they don't know that those resources exist or they don't know how to utilize them. Um, so one part of this, we recognize that in order to um, set and achieve income and education related goals, our um, participants are gonna need to know what resources are available to help them achieve those goals. Um, so that was one thing that we, we did was go through the community and, and gather um, close to 200 resources that we put in a guidebook for them. And then depending on what their goal was, they were able to choose one of the resources from the list to help them um, support them as they worked on their goal. Um, the third component is assessing the impact of Ruby Payne poverty and Lakota culture training on com community program workers. So another um, area that we saw that needed improvement in our community was um, the, the resources approach with the, um, the young mothers in our community. There are many barriers that they were experiencing um, to access the resources that, that were available to them. So we had a training, we sat down and, and went through um, many of the um, poverty concepts and the situations that the women in our community might face. 
Um, activities and accomplishments, um, we achieved SCSU and Great Plains IRB um, approval, as well as our um, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribal Council approval. We developed and disseminated the resource guide, which is now available on the Kirka webpage. Um, and I think that it, at, it was a, a long process to get all these resources gathered and contact information and descriptions of, of how resources can be accessed and utilized. Um, but it's something that I hope that every community um, can have because it's already been an invaluable resource for both the programs and the community members. Um, we hosted the Poverty and Lakota Culture Training. Um, with that, some of the areas that we talked about in addition to poverty was the Lakota values and how our program, um, whether it's the person sitting at the front desk greeting people to the administration and programs, how they can use those Lakota values to, um, to work with their clients in a better way. We also talked about a trauma-informed approach with the, um, the clients that they'll be working with and resilience. And I just love that resilience seems to have been a word that has showed up in every single presentation. Um, I think that's a, a really exciting thing that we're recognizing that. So we also talked about the resilience. Um, the participants who came to the training requested more trainings because their colleagues weren't able to come um, and they thought that it was something that would be maybe good on a regular or recurring basis. Um, the intervention, we had a, a total of 60 participants and we were able to keep a, a very high retention rate through the project. Okay, so here is a picture of our beautiful resource guide. Um, again, I would encourage you to check that out, um, if nothing else, to, to see how it has been compiled. Um, currently, we are working on analyzing our data. Um, so we have our original research questions, and I just have to say, Ray is in a biostats class right now, so she is <laughs> like, let's do this, let's do this, let's dichotomize this. Um, so this will probably be a a process that goes on until at least she graduates. <laughs> um, but we are, we're really excited about some of the findings, not just related to our original questions, but things that we're seeing related to goal attainment, um, resiliency, like Ray mentioned. We paired together uh, two of our specific aims, so the development of the resource guide and the um, training that we held and submitted that as a process paper to a special issue of community psychology, I think it was. And we um, have submitted some of our preliminary results from our intervention as well to that special issue. So um, that is wor what we're working on right now in terms of papers and uh, dissemination in that way. We're also working on presentations that can be shared more locally. Um, we are <clears throat> working on a long-term plan for keeping the resource guide updated and accessible. Um, I think that's, in addition to creating it, is one of the challenges keeping it, keeping it updated and accessible and um, getting it on the Kirka website is a start to that. And that's what we've got. Thank you. Mm -hmm.